Chapter 38 In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and Ishaiah the prophet, the son of Amoz, came to him, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, and, and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beg you, how I have walked before you in truth and in the whole heart, and have done that which is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Ishaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add unto your days fifteen years. And I will deliver you in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And this shall be the sign unto you from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Behold, I will cause the shadow of the dial, which has gone down on the sundial of Ahaz, to return backward ten degrees. So the sun returned ten degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. The writing of Ezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness. I said in the noontime of my days, I shall go even to the gates of the netherworld. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said I shall not see the Lord, even the Lord, in the land of the living. I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. My habitation is plucked up and carried away from me as a shepherd's tent. I have rolled up like a weaver my life. He will cut me off from the thrum, from day even to night, wilt thou make an end of me. The more I make myself like unto a lion, until morning, the more it breaketh all my bones. From day even to night wilt you make an end of me. Like a swallow or a crane, so do I chatter. I do moan as a dove. Mine eyes fell with looking upward. O Lord, I am oppressed. Be you my surety. What shall I say? He hath both spoken unto me, and himself hath done it. I shall go softly all my years for the bitterness of my soul. O Lord, by these things men live, and altogether therein is the life of my spirit. Wherefore recover you me, and make me to live. Behold, for my peace I had great bitterness, but you have in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption, for you have cast all my sins behind your back, for the nether world cannot praise you, Death cannot celebrate you. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for your truth. The living, the living, he shall praise you. And I do as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known the truth. The Lord is ready to save me. Therefore we will sing songs to the string instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. And Ishaiah said, Let them take a cake of figs and, I, and lay it for a plaster upon the boil, and he shall recover. And Ezekiel said, What is the sign that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? Okay, let's go back up to verse 1. Now we remember in yesterday's chapter that the that Rabshakeh was outside the city, and God had done what he said he was going to do it caused him to hear a, a little rumor and Rabshakeh took off him and the and Sennacherib to go battle at Libna and after there Sennacherib returned and his two sons slayed him just like the God said was going to happen and we find that the during this period of time when Rabshakeh was there that Hezekiah was sick and that's where we're going to be picking up today in verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and Ishaiah the prophet, the son of Amoz, came to him and said to him, Thus saith the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. And Hezekiah is sick. Hezekiah is the strength of God. He is sick unto death, and Ishaiah the prophet has come to him there in his bed, and told him that you're going to die from this. You're not going to live, so get everything in order. Verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. So Hezekiah, king of Judah, it turned his face to the wall. And he begins to pray to God. 3. And said, Remember now, O Lord, I beg you, how I have walked before you in truth and the whole heart, and have done that which is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept sore.
and we remember this from Second Kings, and, and Ezekiah had destroyed all the high places. Ezekiah had tried to walk before the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul, and he had cried out unto God in this, and, and God heard Ezekiah. For then came the word of the Lord to Ishaiah, saying, So after when Ishaiah was leaving, we remember that, that Ezekiah turned his face and began to cry unto the Lord, and Ishaiah hadn't even got out of town, and the Lord turned him around. Five, go and say to Ezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add unto your days fifteen years. So Ishaiah goes back to Hezekiah and tells him, You're not going to die. You're going to live. The God of your fathers, the God of David, has said that you're going to be all right. He's going to add to you your days, your understanding, these 15 years, and, and 15 is 5 and 10. It's the grace of the law in this overall understanding. And we're going to find that this this overall understanding of this was God is going to deliver this city now. Uh, and, and this was the even a sign of the prophecies that God is here. God is guarding this city, and God is going to deliver this city. Six. And I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And we'll remember that's what was going on. That's what's been going on. The king of Assyria had sent Reb Shekha and Reb Satters and Tartan and all these down there in the great army against Jerusalem, against Judah. And this is where the chief seat was. And God is saying, now, I'm going to deliver you, even though the king of Assyria has destroyed all these nations around you, destroyed all their not-a-gods, I'm going to exert myself into the earth and deliver this city. 7. And this shall be a sign unto you from the Lord, that which the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. And we would find here that, so God had decided now, it we read Second Kings that he's going to give Hezekiah a sign that this is his word from this is a word from God. And if we went to the end of this chapter and read verse twenty one and twenty two, after we read verse six, we would get this message. But we're we'll, we're going to see that this this book is made of some scrambled writings, and may have not got put back in order correctly. 8. Behold, I will cause the shadow of the dial, which has gone down on the sun dial of Akaz, to return backwards 10 degrees. So the sun returned 10 degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. And we'll see this 10 degrees it, on, a, on the sun dial represents, and it goes backwards. This sun dial, though, is the sun dial of Akaz. This Akaz means the one that has been grasped, the one God took a hold of. Remember him? He's the one that was causing enough trouble. God come up out of his seat and took a hold of him like a child he was getting ready to punish. See, and in his, in his strength, he took a hold of him. This is what we're talking about. And this was an evil period of time of all cause. We can go back and it's, it's documented. And this is what we're talking about. We're going to go backwards even. We're going to go backwards in this, under our understanding even, into this period of great idolatry. And we'll find out, as soon as Ezekiah dies, this is exactly what happens. So it returns backwards, and, and, and this was what God said he was going to do. Of course, their understanding was that it was on an actual sundial, and, they, and this they would be a sign even of the physical form that God did do. And, and at here now, we are going to skew off, and we are going to put in here some writings of the writing of Hezekiah. He was the king of Judah. And so uh, from verse 9 here, this is, this is kind of like a prayer Hezekiah wrote down and has been included into the book of Ishaia 9, the writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah when he had been sick and was recovered from his sickness. So after Hezekiah had recovered, and we would find out what they did in verse 21, 22, uh, Ishaiah says, now put a 
thing of figs, put a plaster of figs on there, and he'll recover. And he did recover, and this is what he wrote down after he recovered. 10. I said in the noontide of my days, I shall go. Even to the gates of the netherworld, I am deprived of the residue of my years. And this noontime is at the height when the sun is in the height. And at the best time, it's like the midday. So the day's still, it's just but half over and, and still got a greater part of the day to go. So this is where he's at in life, in his noontime of it, my days. This is what this means. He was in the height of his life, in the good part of his life. Even to the gates of the netherworld, because he thought he was going to die. God had brought him even to death. And he thought that he was going to be deprived of the residue of his years, even of all this years to come. 11. I said, I shall not see the Lord, even the Lord in the land of the living. I shall behold man no more, the inhabitants of the world. Why? Because he thought he was going to die. So he said to himself, I'm going to die and I won't be able to behold the work of the Lord. I won't be able to grasp and understand God. I won't be able to search for God. I won't be able to look unto God's law and his guidance. He shall not see man no more or the inhabitants of the world because he's going to be utterly cut off. And when you die, it's to be cut off from this land of the living. Twelve. My habitation is plucked up and carried away from me as a shepherd's tent. I have rolled up like a weaver my life. He will cut me off from the thrum. From day even to night will you make an end of me. And, well, God was punishing. God was punishing. And this is what he's talking about. He, he was a man who was go going to die. He had accepted death. He was had took and prepared his house now and even made ready all things for death and he has said to himself his habitation is plucked up that and his habitation is this place where he enjoyed his life with God and man here in this earth but he thought that now just like a shepherd's tent uh, this shepherd being one who is a one who roams around tending the flock just like he would roll up his tent he keeps it ready to go. The, he is a nomadic. He is one, a wanderer. He would roll up his tent quickly. He is rolled up like a weaver. His life, even a weaver, this one who works at the loom, has finished a rug. He would roll it up and begin his new project. He will cut me off from the thrum. And a thrum here is not the hustle and bustle. A thrum here is the the fringed edges, as the weaver would cut off now, the 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 rug or his garment, whatever he was making on the loom, it would leave the threaded edges of this frayed edges now in the loom, and this is what the thrum is. And and so when he went back to do to work the next one, he would trim this up. Thirteen, no more. It from day even to night, what you make an end of me. And this is what Ishaia, or this is what Hezekiah was feeling. God had brought him down to death and was killing him, taking away everything, all the pleasures of life. He was being cut off even. 13. The more I make myself like unto a lion until morning, the more it breaketh all my bones. From day even to night will you make an end of me. The more he tries to strengthen himself within, the more he tries to guard, the more he makes himself like a lion, this, this strength even, the more God breaketh all his bones. And the, his bones are the, his essence. The more God breaks down his spirit, he is, keeps being reduced. He, everywhere he tries to find strength, he is cut off. For God is there. God's going to show, using Hezekiah, God is making himself known in, to Hezekiah. 14. Like a swallow or a crane, so do I chatter. I do moan as a dove. Mine eyes fell with looking upward. O Lord, I am oppressed. Be you my surety. And it sounds like he's writing this during his sickness. But he, this is his memories even that he's 
of his sickness. And the swallow or a crane, even these birds, as they sit there and chatter their, their, their jaws, and he moans as a dove because he was in, in sickness and, and God ha had brought him there. 15. What shall I say? He hath both spoken unto me, and himself hath done it. I shall go softly all my years for the bitterness of my soul. And Ezekiel is questioning now. What, what can he say, though? See, God has done this. God has spoken it unto him, said that he was going to do it. God himself has done it. See, when God says he's going to do this, and when God does it, what, what can you say? God has used you. God is, this is the will of God. He, I shall go softly all my years for the bitterness of my soul. And it has, Zechariah thought and knew he had been punished by God. And he had been spared by God. God had added even life unto him from his, where he thought he was in sickness. He was going to die. God restored him. God re restored his life. And he said, I will go softly all my years for the bitterness of my soul, because he had been reduced to death, and God had done this. 16. O Lord, by these things men live, and altogether therein is life, is the life of my spirit. Wherefore, recover you me, and make me to live. And by these things men live, by the understanding of God do men live, and all together therein is my life and my spirit. And his spirit was caught up in God. And that's why Hezekiah had destroyed all the high places. Hezekiah had destroyed the altars. He had cleaned out the temple. Hezekiah had done all this because his spirit was with God. And that's why God healed Hezekiah. And because he prayed unto God. He, he sought God as soon as he seen he was going to die. He sought God even in his in death he sought him. 17. Behold, for my peace I had great bitterness, but you have in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. God had forgiven Hezekiah. God was using Hezekiah as an example. Even though Hezekiah had been brought up in, in sin, Ezekiel had been brought up in this way of corruption in life. God had delivered him from it in understanding. God had given Ezekiel a certain amount of understanding to overcome these things. And this is what he's talking about, this pit of corruption, because he had seen the idolatry and, and cleaned it up in his, in his country. And this is the, where God had forgiven him and cast his sins behind his back. God had forgotten this, 18, but he was going to make an example out of him, 18. For the netherworld cannot praise you. Death cannot celebrate you. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for your truth. Why, they're dead, this netherworld, this world even of the flesh, where here men sin. They do not obey the law of God, and they sin. And this is, this is the netherworld. This is where you die. This is a world of flesh, and here all manners of perversion and immorality exist. Men have the ability to, to stop this and clean it up. But these things, you're, and this knowledge, is withheld from you. They that go down into the pit, these that, that are taken in idolatry, they cannot hope for your truth. Why? They are deceived. See, they are deceived. 19. The living, the living, he shall praise you as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known your truth. This is the way it was supposed to work. The father was supposed to teach the children the law. Well, God is our father. God does teach us the law constantly through punishment or blessing. And this is, we were supposed to teach our children, even as parents, the law, and that they would not depart from it. And if they did, they would return, because God, they would see the punishment in their life. But the living are those that obey the law of God. See, these have life, these have been restored. The soul that turned from his sin, that soul shall live, see. But the soul that does not turn, the soul that sins, that soul shall die. 
thing. That's that's the law. And that's what we're talking about here. 20. The Lord is ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing songs to the stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. And God is ready to save. God is ready to save you. God is ready to save me. God is ready to save everybody who will be obedient to the law. And if all would be, he would pour out blessings upon the earth that are unrestrained. This we will find written as well. 21. And Ishaiah said, Let them take a cake of figs and lay it upon the plaster upon the boil, and he shall recover. And we'll we'll see that this at, at twenty here this little prayer that Ish, that Hezekiah was saying ends, and like I said we could take twenty one and slide it back up there because this is this would be the order of actually of the, the verses. We remember that he said he'd take a plaster of figs. Figs is always this representation of a fruit that is acceptable, even from a fruit tree or a fig tree or. A, this plaster even made of the law. This boil would be this oozing, festering sore that Ezekiel had that he thought it was going to kill him. 22, and Ezekiel said, What is the sign that I will go up to the house of the Lord? Well, we know what the sign is. The sign was that God is going to cause the sundial, verse 8, Behold, I will cause the shadow of the sundial, which has gone down the sundial of Alcos to return backwards 10 degrees. So you're going to go back into this world of idolatry. And this is what happens. We're going to find out. Now Manasseh is born after Hezekiah dies. And Manasseh uh, causing to forget is what it means. And this is where they do. They return back into, we'll find great idolatry even, bringing even into the house of God and raising up images and pillars there. Okay, we are going to move on to chapter 39.